Today in Tuscaloosa, Ernest Shelton looking, bobblehead. Grizzard had 10 tied up by five at the break. Second half, Gators go on a run. Orion Green to Matt Bonner, who had a terrific day. 18 points, we're tied at 36. Gators had pushed it out to 10. Orion Green, bottom. Seven points for Green. Gators up 13. They started with a 12-2 run, but Mo Williams inside to Irwin Dudley. Mo had seven assists and Godfrey's team within four. Moments later, Dudley again. Dudley, Dudley. Do right and one. 14 points, nine rebounds for him. Tied down one. Billy Donovan exhorting his troops. Said they didn't match Alabama's intensity for a five-minute period. But Green matches everything with a big-time jumper. And the Gators are on top by one. 16.8 to go. James White, the freshman at the line. Misses the free throw. Godfrey said if anybody else had gotten aboard except Mo Williams, he would have called timeout. But he didn't. Off the floor, Mo around the D. Mo's in the corner, feeds Shelton. Six seconds, five, four, three, two. Headway inside, lays it off. Yes, at the buzzer, at the buzzer. Bama wins. The mini microwave, Antoine Petway with a gamer. What happened, Dick? Well, James White has Petway out at the top, and then he turns to watch the ball, sees the baseline move. All of a sudden, Shelton gets the ball, and there's, oh. Goes in for a layup. Petway, big two points. The turning point of the game again from this angle. Shelton's in the air, leaves his feet, finds Petway in. James White let him get away. That was the basket, win the game. Petway kept himself alive, and Godfrey celebrating. Assistant Darren Boatwright getting a big ride right there with Godfrey. I think Petway was going to disrobe. This guy was a former walk-on, has a scholarship now in the Crimson Tide, which is a share of the SEC's title, 65-64. Big second-half comeback. Tum down 13, Alabama makes it happen, but Florida again. 19 turnovers. Why? They just don't have that right point guard handling the ball. So we mentioned the tied share of the overall title, but the East Diggers still a dogfight. Florida, Georgia, Kentucky all sitting there with five losses. It's a log jam there. You might think Georgia's in best shape, home against South Carolina on the road against Tennessee. Well, Florida and Kentucky obviously are trying to battle to get to that top spot in the SEC Conference Tournament, but you got to love Alabama. I really think if Alabama can win the SEC Conference Tournament, they deserve a number one seed in the West if Oklahoma and Cincinnati start to fade. Alabama in the toughest conference right now, so it would stand to reason if you sweep both, they would have to be considered. Pac-10 also just a mess at the top. UCLA and Stanford, Matt Barnes serving a suspension for the forearm shiver against Shante Leggins and Cal the other night. Billy Knight with Julius Barnes all over him. It was a 49-40 game. Monty got teed up. Bruins had a couple of free throws there to stretch it out. The six-point game in the second half, Capono the floater, eight-point Bruin lead. The second half, Stanford was just chucking it, Dick. Too many threes. No one finds it. There goes Jacobson. He misses. Then the Julius Barnes, his turn in the corner. He misses. Then Josh Childress, he misses. And what happens? They go 14 for 42 from threes. You can't take that many threes in the game. You got to go to the basket, especially, especially against UCLA. The percentage, just a couple off their season mark, but the point's well taken. They just took too many. But of course, if you make them like Capono did after that great one step move, he had 22 points, 18 point game. Chris Hernandez stroking for Stanford. Cut it back to eight. Cardinal not giving up at Maples. And the inbound pass, Capono, Capono knocks down Jacobson. Offensive foul, couple of free throws made it six. Bruins give it up again. Hernandez underneath, blocked by Billy Knight. Jacobson gonna get called for the foul. And Casey and the guys had an opportunity, but UCLA hangs on, 95-92. UCLA's loss against Cal. Barnes, Capone, and Knight combined for nine for 26. Today they show up. Capone gets 22, Knight gets 17. You talk about a Jekyll and Hyde team, UCLA's got that down pat. First time this season that the Cardinal has lost two games in a row. USC started the day on top of the Pac-10 with Oregon. Trojans and Henry Bibby taking on Cal. They lost Cal earlier this season in OT. Tied at 24. Look at that look from Amit Tamir to Joe Ship. Two-point bear lead. What was the difference in this from Digger's zone defense? Zone defense by Cal. Watch the steal and a pass back out to the entry. Comes back in and gets it. Leads to what? Transition, easy points. A.J. Diggs makes this happen. Great steal gets it done. On reversing it. Now watch the Trojan. They played a 2-3 zone, but watch the center come up the paint as he does. It's the wing lob play. Whoop. Make it. alley -oop. get a quick two. They bust Southern Cal zone. Solomon Hughes finishing up there and more soft Trojan D. Maybe a little confusion. Joe Ship, you saw him finishing on the fast break. Cut along the baseline again, left open. And Ben Braun, 
pleased with the execution. His team wins it 83 to 64. The Bears sweep the LA schools for this weekend, beating the Trojans by 19 after taking the Bruins by 18. That's another 21 season for Cal. Staying Stan Clancy in the did not get his double double. Broke his streak of 11. He only had six rebounds. Was not a factor in the paint. That's true. So the Trojans have to hope that they get a little help from Washington if they wanted to stay atop the Pac-10. Senior night. Mac Ford, Freddie Jones looking to lead Oregon to its first perfect home record since 38. Look at Freddie Jones. Later in the first half, the high flying duck in the open floor. At black. <laughs> 15 to 8 ducks. Freddie can do it from the outside as well. He had 15 of Oregon's first 18 points, and here is a first round draft pick. That's Joey Harrington. No, nah, that's not the quarterback. Well, oh, the ladies love the beard. No question. Jones going to the hole. Less than a minute to go. Washington really hung around in this game. It's a three point game. 82 79. Who else, Jones? I believe it was senior night. Washington falls to Oregon. They gave the Ducks a big fight. They won the first meeting between these two, 90 to 84. So Oregon completes its first 16 and 0 season at Matt Court since the 37 38 season, first perfect home record. And as a result, the Ducks sit alone atop the Pac 10 right now at 12 and 4. Schedule is going to become very important down the stretch. Oregon's here taking on Texas in the Big 12. Samson and the Sooners. Juanis White of the Pride of St. Aug High School in New Orleans. Knocking down the three, and then it's Jason Dietrich. Bottom. One St. Aug guy to another. You saw Quanah White. Now you're going to see Hollis Price. He is the guy that really makes, really makes Oklahoma go. Coming up with some good D there, and Barnes not amused. Uh, he was so mad, I thought he saw Dean Smith for a minute. He got that team with 11-19 left, trying to get his team to go. They're up, they're losing 66-49, but never get back in this game. Oklahoma really played with a lot of defensive intensity, got a lot of fast breaks, made things happen in me today in the second half. So a 64-49 lead, Oklahoma would pull away in this thing, 96-78. The final, OU's won 21 in a row at Noble Center, and they've beaten the Horn seven straight times. Well, Texas gets back home. they got a two-game losing streak. They have Texas Tech coming in Tuesday night. Should be a big game in the Big 12. Sooners hit a season high, 12 triples, committed just six turnovers. College Hoops Tonight is brought to you by ESPN Full Court, Maximum College Basketball. Virginia's really struggling, and Georgia Tech's been good in Charlottesville. They won three of the previous four late in the second half. Virginia up for Adam Hall. Coming back, he was 6 of 11 from the four, 15 points, six boards right there. Six-point lead for the Cavaliers. Buck 30 to go. Roger Mason Jr. can't get the free throws. Missed the front end of the one and one. So Tech brings the ball down, and Tech was absolutely feeling it from behind the arc. B.J. Elder from behind the I rock Daytona sign. That's a long way out. Tech cuts the lead to three. Next possession, Virginia and a spread. Gillard's going to call a timeout. Now, Virginia is going to end up on the free throw line. Travis Watson misses the front end of a one and one. Moore pulls down the board. Aiken's going to push it up. Virginia chooses to foul. They have a three point lead, Digger. Why foul here? Because you're going to trade a two for the three, knowing you're going to hit the ball back. And when you see Tony Aikens make this, it's now a one point game. But well, he's an 82% free throw shooter, or nearly that. He was nine for nine from the line. So now we have a one point game. And Watson's going to end up with the ball. Not really what Gillen wanted. He got fouled immediately. And Missed the first one, he gets another, then the double bonus, and he missed them both. Ball goes out of bounds, and blue ball. Georgia Tech has it, 10 ticks to go. Aikens working it. Marvin Lewis popping to the top. Lewis, nothing but NIT. N-I-T or NET. Could have put Virginia in the NIT. This is a costly, costly loss for Virginia. 82 to 80. Paul Hewitt's squad gets it done. Tech 15 to 25 from behind the arc. But their defense broke down. Georgia Tech hit 14 threes before Lewis hit number 15. You got to find them at the line. Virginia didn't do a good job defensively. Well, let's look. Amy's resume looks pretty good. Notre Dame wouldn't mind beefing theirs up a bit. Darius Rice. See the three. B, the three. Double point total from the first half. And Rice got so hot that Uncle Jerry would have been proud. 17 points in the first eight minutes of the second half. Fighting Irish up five, and the freshman, Chris Thomas, what a great look to Harold Swanigan. He had 12 assists, but he did a little more than that, Digger. Yes, he did. When you watch him move on the perimeter, he fades in the corner. 
finds it, gets back out, comes to his ball side corner, nails the three. Confidence is back, 32 points, 12 assists. After going 0 for 14 on the road against Rutgers, he was doing everything right for the Irish today. Breaking the press, Swanigan, slam dunk, big win on the road for Notre Dame. This, to me, gives them an NCAA bid. They play St. John's this Wednesday in Madison Square Garden. But when you see them right now, 9-5, and five, they got Providence home next Sunday. They'll finish in double figures and get in that large in the NCAA tournament. So that Ryan Humphrey dunk gave him a double-double. His fifth straight as Notre Dame cruises in that one. Elsewhere in the Big East, Villanova Boston College, second half. Nova up by seven. Ricky Wright looking for Brooks Sales. This is if someone left his sister wide open. Nova goes up by nine. Then Antonio Bryant gets hot. Not, not the Bulletnikoff winning receiver from a few years back, but the shooter from BC for three. Brian Sidney going to find Bryant. Oh, the Eagles know a hot hand when they find it. Sidney didn't play well at all. Two for eight on eight points. They need him to get it going. Yeah, but Bryant helped him out a little bit. How about his fourth three of the day? And We'll get one more. He gets five. Oh, well, why not? Even Troy Bell giving it up to him. 15 points, five triples. BC wins it 69 to 67. Three what? four their last seven, though. That's not good. West Virginia and UConn. Oh, to Ron Butler from Ben Gordon. May I serve you going the other way? Jonathan Hargett. I guess he thought the French judge might be impressed by that. Emeka Okafor dominant inside. <laughs> Just block after block after block. Eight big ones today to tie Danielle Marshall with 111, and he's still got some games left to play. 95-73, UConn rolls. Seton Hall and Rutgers. Second half, Mike Sherrod coming up with a steal. Marcus Tony L. A nasty, wicked foul. Borderline Bush League. I'm not so sure he wasn't just trying to strip the ball, but we can't have that. And then we have a Donnie Brook that ensues. Somebody said something about somebody's mama, and people got upset. Sherrod had to be restrained. You can't really blame him for being mad. Dick. No, he got really hooked right around the neck, and I'd be upset, too. So you can't leave the bench. Tough play. Don't need that in the Big East. Rutgers takes care of business. The final 66 to 60 in that. Down in the SEC. Rutgers, you see him finishing it off. They've been great at the rack this year. Waters is really taking care of business. In the SEC, Georgia on the road, Baton Rouge. Two minutes to go, tied at 53, Horace Bright. Bayou Bengals up by a bucket. 30 seconds to go, Rashad Wright. Boy, he's really played well for Herrick's team. Toes on the line, just a two, he had six. Dogs up by one. Final possession, Ronald Dupree's had a great year, but gives it up. Gives it up, and when you see why he gives it up, turnover. Georgia escapes 55-54. Jarvis Hayes with 14 points to lead Herrick's town. Arkansas and Kentucky. Eric Daniels, Jared, Gerald Fitz suspended for that fake ID usage. Tubby trying to crack the whip a little bit, and the Cats looked pretty good. Yes, they did. Played with a lot of intensity. They played the zone defense. Arkansas couldn't score from the perimeter, and that's why Kentucky got easy points on fast breaks. Moving the ball well. A nice move inside there. Cliff Hawkins finding Chuck Hayes for the layup. And then Rashad Carruth. This is an element Kentucky needs. The outside shooter. And Carruth can't stroke it. Cats up by nine at the half. Second half off the miss. Hayes looking to Hawkins. And I believe there has been a Keith Bogan sighting. 71-58 Kentucky. Over years ago, the Pokes taking on Baylor. Victor Williams to the hole, captain 12-0 run. Cowboys up 13. Williams had 18. Played in the first half. Pokes up by seven. Melvin Sanders will miss. Ivan McFarlane will not. 40-29 game at the break. Baylor hanging around. Wendell Greenleaf with the three, within four, but then Williams to McFarlane again. Reese Baker only played 14 minutes, 0 for three. His ankle's not healthy yet. McFarlane 20 and 14, 77-64. The Cowboys get it done. Texas A&M and Bob Knight's Red Raiders. Andre Emmett gets his hand on one. A little steal. Kids. Oh, I don't know if they call that sick or silly. Went in, Emmett had 13, tech by six, is Andy Ellis. Andy Ellis, you love, great perimeter player. At the buzzer, gets it done, can step out and shoot anytime. 74-53, the final. Colorado and Missouri. Oh, Clarence Gilbert, Clarence Gilbert, Clarence Gilbert, Clarence Gilbert. 12-3. Gilbert. Digger, you're stealing my thunder here. You're stealing my thunder, easy. 12? I don't know, wait and see. Clarence is stroking it to the east. He is stroking it to the west. He is stroking it from the places that he likes best. Wow. He'd be points. stroking. 40 points. Clarence Gilbert, oh. let me ask you something. Where you been all year? Have you ever made shots from the back seat of a car? The police came and shined their light on me. And I said, 
I'll be stroking. Oh, Clarence Gilbert, Clarence Gilbert, Clarence Gilbert. You're right. 40 points, a dozen triples. That is a Big 12 record. It is putting the big in the Big 12. And you see that Clarence, we know when he warms up, he's tough. He's among the top single game performers in three points, three pointers made. He had a dozen in this one. He had eight in a game last year. There are 11 other guys who've made eight, so I guess that's not such a big deal, huh? In the Big Ten, Ohio State glad to see Columbus after that four-game road trip. Their game back of Indiana in the Big Ten standings taking on Purdue. Brian Brown knocking down the triple. He's no Clarence Gilbert. He's still a pretty good shooter. Buckeyes by five. Brent Darby. Okay, maybe together they could be like Clarence Gilbert. Ohio State by 10, 15 for Darby. Buckeyes to push it out to 13. Brown going to finish that up. He had 18. Ohio State 77 to 66. Minnesota and Penn State. Second half, 240 to go. We're tied at 61. Michael Bauer wide open. About Gophers go up by three. Same score about a minute to go. Here's Brandon Watkins. Watkins makes his big one from the perimeter, but Minnesota really plays well. They need to win this game to go eight and six and still be in the hunt for an at-large based on how they do in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. The freshman Rick Rickard came up short on the first one, made the second one. He had 14-68-64. Monson's team gets it done. Illinois Northwestern, Illini by nine. Robert Archibald to steal. Frankie misses. Archibald there to clean up. Seven points, 13 boards, and three blocks. They've got six straight wins coming up, four on the road. Illinois is hot right now in the Big Ten. Big Corey Bradford knocking down the triple under five seconds to go in the first. Illinois up 32 to 13. Oh, that's just showing off Frankie to Bradford. Bradford ended up with a dozen, 35, 13 at the half. Lutherhead finishing 56 to 41. Illinois finishes it up and go inside the box score. 21 turnovers for Illinois, 0 for 17 for Carmody's team. He said he didn't think he'd ever had a team that didn't make a three-pointer, and he was right. First time it's happened. Well, that's a Princeton offense. They got to do more back doors and shoot less threes. In the running use, second half under a buck 30 to play. BYU have been down by 21 in this game. Matt Montague, triple Cougars within one. Under 30 seconds to go, one-point game. Eric Nielsen. Nielsen, a little floater in the lane. Cougars first lead, 62-61, under 15 kicks. Nick Jacobson misses. Daniel Howard grabs the board. He is fouled. He made a free throw. Cougars up by a couple. Five seconds to go. Travis Spivey gets it blocked. And BYU, 63-61. Hanson had 17. Kent and Ohio under a minute to go, 67-64. Bobcats down. Steve Estercamp. Gets it right back after dumping it. We're tied at 67. How about Trevor Huffman, Digger? He's going to come up large. Big large. And this is after they come back. Ohio U playing at home after beating North Carolina. They lose at home tonight. Last second. Seconds to play. Here's Reed. <laughs> For three. To tie. He did it. Six seconds remaining. Iowa State does have timeouts, but they're not going to. It's Morgan getting it to power. Fight it for the win. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable play. Iowa State wins at 73-71.